money. We all know why we need money, why we use money, why it is used, why we use it to exchange. But do you know why this particular thing that is money, why it is used? Let me clear the reason. The reason is before this money system, we were in a system which we call barter economy. In this economy, we have to, if you want to buy anything, if you want to get anything, purchase anything, then we have to exchange with anything of ours. Suppose I have pen with me and I want to buy pencil, then I have to find a person who want to give me pencil and in return he will take that pay. Okay. But this economy is not good. Why? Because we don't know what is the value of that particular product or that particular thing and we may be looted or we may be cheated for that. So our government came to this concept money. Through this we can buy anything. Now the two sources of money is one we are working somewhere we are getting a job and from there we are getting our income or we can say we are getting wages for that and that also in terms of money. Now with that we can buy anything we want or we are having something some sort of product that I will sell it and we get that money and we can return it we can buy anything with that. But if this concept was not there then what we have to do suppose I am giving you an example of a shoe manufacturer who wanted to buy wheat and want to sell or exchange shoe. Now if we are in an era when money is then we can easily, that shoe manufacturer can easily sell his shoes and will get the money in return and can buy it. But if that shoe manufacturer was in an era where barter economy was followed, then what does he have to do? He have to buy a person, he have to found a, find a person who wanted to sell wheat and want to buy shoes, which is a very tough task. These coincidences we call double coincidence. Now what is the concept of double coincidence of one? Double coincidence of one basically states us that double coincidence of ones basically tells us that a person will buy and exchange his product with another person who is agreed to buy his product and sell to buy this product. But we think that this is a very hectic task to find another person who is agreed to both of these things. So our government brought us the concept to be called money. With the help of money we can buy, with the help of money we can buy or sell anything we want. Not only that, want to visit somewhere, we wanted to go somewhere, then we can exchange our money that is in rupees, in India it is in rupees, with that country's currency and we can use it that. So that's why we can tell that money is a medium of exchange. And also due to this money, we came to the concept we can say saving, credit, recurring deposit, all these things, check system. Why we are in, if we are in the partner economy, then it is unable, we are unable to save our money because we don't have that concept. But if we are we want to save money in this era, we can easily give our money, deposit our money in the banks, and if we want to loan, bank will give us that money as a loan with a certain rate of interest. So that's why we can say money is a medium of exchange, and also it is considered as a liquid asset. The reason is we call it a liquid asset because we can't keep it for long. We will use it randomly anywhere we can. But 